Ahsoka Season 1, Episode 6. Thoughts? This episode is called Far, Far Away. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this episode. Before I dig in, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the site after Strikers. I implore you to do so. And then there's some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. Perhaps you have a story for me. You're not crossing your arms. Is there, is there something going on here? And... Yeah, the Hu Yang and Ahsoka debate, you know, the, the choice Sabine made. Excellent scene. And, uh, you know, afterwards, uh, Ahsoka says she would like Hu Yang to tell her a story. And he starts it with the words, in a long time, uh, you know, a long time ago. I'm guessing he's going to do without the galaxy far, far away part, but still, it's it's neat. I like it. Another. And... Yeah, you know, um, Balin says, you know, tells Sabine Wren, this is an opportunity for reflection. But there aren't any mirrors in ourselves, so I really have no idea what he's talking about. But yeah, it does seem like, you know, this deal's getting worse all the time. And very, very cool to go to the Dathmir homeworld, or original, the, where they came from before, and meet some Night Sisters. And they do the, the echo effects on the voice, just like on the Clone Wars. Really, really cool. And just, yeah, the appearance and body language and, and everything about them completely nails. Yeah. And. Yeah, uh, Balin, you know, now thinks that these, you know, these bad things happening are inevitable. You know, he is not driven, he realizes that they're bad, but he's not driven to stop them. And in fact, we see he's actually trying to make them happen. In an earlier episode, he said, you know, the, the only through destruction comes creation, kind of. So, yeah, really, really cool with the Star Destroyer and them chanting Thrawn's name. There's a very, like, cult feel. Like, Stormtroopers, although th these were identified as, like, Night Troopers or something like that, you know. Yeah, the forces of the Empire have been really intimidating from day one. You know, despite the... F I maintain, it's not that they have bad aim, it's that there's a lot of plot armor for the good guys. But anyway, the the... Yeah, them as, as like, cult members, which, you know, you can understand, like, they've been out here for some time now, and Thrawn is the only leader they've had any contact with. So, yeah, he's, it's like a cult now. Love the build-up to Thrawn arriving, and, and, you know, at first we don't see his face, we see, like, his feet. We see him from behind, you know, build up to the face. Love the score, also. And just, yeah, um, you wouldn't think that it's been five years since Last Mikkelsen last played Thrawn. Because it really feels like he just stepped right up. There's not a... He didn't miss a beat. There's, it's just 100% perfect. And his physical performance really does live up to the voiceover performance. You know, so, yeah, really, really cool to see. And the writing is also on point. This is exactly the way Thrawn was on Rebels. And, and I guess the books, but I haven't read those. And, yeah, so... <laughs> The, the, um, you know, Sabine is quite surprised to be told, you know, you know, she's like, you're letting me go. And then, you know, yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah, he explains it quite well. And then she's told, you know, there are roving nomads out there, you know, bands of nomads that try to kill each other. 
die well. Now, that does sound like the words die well, that sounds really harsh. However, in German, die Welle just means, I want to say, the method, because there's like a, a really excellent movie called Die Welle. So, really, what they're saying is the method for you to die well is right through that door, you know, so, which is just convenient. And let's see. Yeah, and and you know, then Thrawn says the the you know Balin and and I never remember her to Chin is is that part of her name? Something like that. I mean no offense, I just don't remember her name. Um yeah, he sends them you know, to destroy them both. And it is like this thing of, you know, Thrawn's forces already looked for sure, you know, already looked for, for Ezra. They, they've they been struggling to find him. Now there's a Jedi slash Mandalorian looking for him. You know, that's that's something that they didn't have before. And yeah, if they manage to find him, you know, yeah, have them have them killed, obviously. And yeah, really, really great fight between Sabine Wren and one of the gangs. And then we're, you know, Morgan is told by Thrawn, you know, whether Sabine and or Ezra are killed or stranded doesn't really matter. Same thing for Balin and Chin. You know, because that, and, and that is very true to his character and fascist in general. You know, if you're not useful, they they get rid of you. The, you know, the fact that they couldn't have, like, Thrawn's victory is partially assured by the actions of Balin and Shin. And he doesn't care because he doesn't need them anymore. There's no sympathy or empathy or... or anything you know the if they hadn't freed Morgan if Morgan had remained a prisoner of the New Republic you know that's it there's no yeah Thrawn never gets rescued and you know like even there's a there's a lot of evil people who'd at least say well you know make sure to reward them give them so and so much gold that they'll, you know, that they'll have for the rest of their lives or something, you know, but, yeah, fascist, completely, just cruel, sadistic, merciless, and I really appreciate media like this helping to fight them, because they are one of the biggest threats today. And the, okay, so apparently the creature's called a howler, according to the subtitles, you know, it it returns, and Sabine is like, "You you ran out on me. No, go away. You know, I don't want you." And and like it lowers its head and and leaves, and she walks out of the shot, and like a couple of seconds, and then it walks back into the shot and follows her. Just really adorable, you know. And she does eventually. You know, she says, "Okay, you can have another chance," and we get a happy tail wag. And the, the, so the, the subtitles identify them as Noti, speaking Noti, if, if I'm pronounced, I guess, I guess it could be Noti, you know, it's not like they're going to a wedding, I don't see why they would be wearing a tie, but yeah, um, you know, the, I, I don't, it's been a long time since I spoke Noti. So I'm going to, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll give a rough translation. You know, when, when he, you know, at first he's just like hiding, but then he starts speaking to Sabine, and what he's saying roughly translates into, "Hello, I'll be your adorable merchandising opportunity for this episode." And yeah, I, I do quite. It's, it's, you know, when, when the howler just stops, you know, she's like, "So what do you have?" Oh. You were just thirsty, huh? And about to, to give it water, and it, like, stops at a rock, and she's like, it's a rock. Just, you know, let it go. There's nothing here. And it licks it, and the, the crab, you know, runs off. 
you know, it's it's a great because that's the thing. Like a lot of creatures can't detect them, but the howler can probably smell. There's something living here, you know. And we see that there's actually like a dozen of them there. And you know, seeing Sabine's the the rebel. What's it called again? Rebel sign. <clears throat> the you know, yeah, that they recognize the first one recognizes that. Also adorable when the dog pants. And we see that Balin, you know, it's it's great. Just, you know, we don't need, like, a long talky scene. Just the fact that Balin is standing with, like, a staff that's been cut in half, clearly by a lightsaber. Okay, yeah, this is definitely Sabine. Nobody else around here has a lightsaber, you know. Because we already, like, if they just found a bunch of banded bodies, it's like, I mean, they're killing each other all the time. We were told that. But a lightsaber, that's definitive. And, you know, the... Yeah, they say, you know, we should work with the... You know, the friend of... The enemy of my enemy is my friend. But the the bandits apparently also speak no ties, so I... I guess... Maybe they're just the same species, not allies? We'll see. And, yeah, I I love the the village of the Notai. really, really feels like a place people could actually live. There are houses, there's a, a baby on, like, the equivalent of a, of a swing. I forget what those... What do, you, what do you all call them? Banana hammock or some... Hammock? I think they're called hammocks. Yeah, sorry, banana hammock is... Uh, it's because it looks somewhat like a hammock, but yeah, hammocks. Um, yeah, the the you know, and yeah, there's a there's a person selling food. You know, it's yeah, it doesn't feel like a set, even though you know, in reality, it is a set. They they built this for the scene, and very cool when. Ezra and Sabine Wren are reunited, and I appreciate So we have another two entire episodes, so there's time for Ezra to do something. You know, he has some choice lines here, but he hasn't really gotten to do anything on this show so far. I'm thinking that'll happen in one or both of the next two episodes. But, but yeah, you know, sweet with the, the hug and... She is reluctant to tell him of the circumstances, understandably so. And he says, you know, the Notai never stay in one place for long. Let's help them pack up. Which is, of course, in part how he's been able to hide from Thrawn, who undoubtedly has had people looking for, you know, Thrawn is a tactician, but he can also hold a grudge. And... Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, it also just makes sense, like, world-building-wise, that the, the crabs were clearly not, like, warriors, that they would be moving around where they live a lot. And I think that is all I have to say. Um, yeah, I've previously, in, in other videos on this show, I've expressed that I was a little worried that they weren't going to have enough material. Um, yeah, so far, you know, I, I did think this episode did well. It didn't feel like it was just padding. And I guess next episode will be when the... Yeah, yeah, because near the end of this episode, the Night Sisters become aware that the that Ahsoka is on her way in Purgle in Purgle form, and yeah, the the let's see the um yeah, so maybe next episode Ahsoka will arrive and. By, you know, my prediction is by the end of the season there will be a complete resolution of the thing with, you know, we, yeah, with, with Thrawn, Morgan, Balin, Chin, 
and the good guys will, you know, I, I don't know if we're going to see a lot of them back in, you know, where we're familiar with them being, back on Lothal and such, but certainly before it's completely over, they are going to arrive. And, yeah, I, I, I am optimistic about the last two episodes. I think they'll be able to keep things moving and have a, you know, strong resolution. Like, I, if this had been the second to last episode, I might have been like, okay, the finale is going to be overstuffed, I fear. But, um, I might be... I, yeah, a little bit more about Thrawn. You know, I appreciate, you know, he knows the people. He's, he's you know, he... His big thing is understanding the, the the variables. He's you know he knows who Balin is, and you know when he learn you know he doesn't say it to Balin's face because that wouldn't be tactical. But afterwards, he's like he's a Jedi. He's flawed, you know. So it, it, and that's why he discards him because like I can't use a Jedi. I can't you know and and that's yeah. Um, and you know he doesn't like he doesn't fly off the handle. You know when when he learns that Ahsoka is apparently you know, and he uh, he actually guesses that. You know he's like the you know oh there's a there, you know the night sisters say there's a you know there's someone coming, and he's like this wouldn't be the Ahsoka that I was assured was dead, would it? Because that is you know that's a a logical place for you know. It's a very logical. I, I don't know if I. I feel like the word guess is wrong. It's more like an estimation, you know. And, you know, he doesn't like start choking Morgan or something. Like, you know, various. You know. I love Darth Vader. I'm not saying this is bad about Darth Vader. I just appreciate that there's variety to the villains of Star Wars, Darth Vader would probably have started strangling her. And, the uh, yeah, you know, when, let's see, the, I, th yeah, that is, that is what I have to say for this one, so, yeah, um, in one week, the show will tell me another story.